Well, retail really needs to be more relevant to the way consumers want to shop today. There's one newer brand that set up their retail store with all of the bags lined up in cubbies with all the things that can fit in each bag. And you're encouraged to go in and play with that, put some of your own stuff into the bag to see if it works. Also hang around, have a drink, do some personalization. So it's really about the experimentation and really figuring out what's gonna work best for you and not feel that pressure when you're in a store that you have to make a decision and buy something. I mean, across industries, retail has just become much more experiential. Um, you know, in the kids' space, you know, that's important to let kids come in and feel at home and play around. And then, you know, that leads them to ask their parents for, you know, the products that are in the store. Um, I think there's a big opportunity in footwear and ki in kids' footwear to take some of the excitement from the toy space and bring it into kids' footwear retailing. And I think the, the onus really is on these brick and mortar retailers as they're competing more and more with e-commerce direct-to-consumer, mm -hmm. you have to make it more experiential, you have to make it more fun, many times more casual. There's a new concept downtown in New York, actually, that is a combination co-working and co-retailing. So the people that are working there are working on their products and then they're selling them downstairs. So there's been a, a few iterations of, of things like that, so we're seeing that starting to grow as well. Retail is changing and technology is playing a big role in this. It's pretty cool stuff that you're seeing out there. Even some bigger retailers are having AI digital apps where you can know within the floor or that you're on, if you should be going to a different floor, what's uh, available, what's the stock, what is the stock of this particular item that maybe you're interested in. It's really helping to keep the consumer engaged in the whole shopping and buying process. That's really interesting because we see that happening within the beauty industry as well. Technology is definitely playing a big part. But one of the other things that we're seeing within the beauty industry in terms of how retail is changing is really more this experiential retail. So we've seen it, you know, in years past with pop-up stores and brands kind of taking ownership of, you know, their space and how they want to put their brand out there and their products out there. But we're also seeing things like um, collectives where we're seeing brands from that really sell primarily in the online space um, coming together into like one retail space to kind of really have that brick and mortar presence. And brick and mortar is actually a very important channel within um, beauty and as I'm sure it is within apparel. It's, it's feel. Exactly. It's where the majority of sales are taking place. Um, so we also see things like hybrid hangouts. So this would be potentially like, you know, a retail space where you're selling beauty products. You're also getting your hair done, uh, nails done potentially as well. We're seeing a lot more of that happening um, in this market. And I think all of these new concepts and options are great and it's making consumers excited about going to stores again. But at the end of the day, stores need to sell product. So I think we're going to see they're still learning here as to what's working best and how to really pull consumers in to actually buy.